Welcome to the 2020 Maneuver Warfighter Conference. I'm Command Sergeant Major Rob Fortenberry of the United States Army Infantry School. This year's theme is appropriately titled Delivering Lethality and Developing Leaders, something I am proud to invest in each and every day here at the Infantry School. Your Infantry School has a proud history in training leaders for the rigors of close combat. You have to look no further than our Infantry School patch to understand our priorities. Emblazoned with an M1905 bayonet, our mission is to inspire and instill the spirit of the bayonet and all whom train here. This spirit of the bayonet comes down to will, the will to meet and destroy the enemies in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It springs from the fighter's confidence, courage, and grim determination, and is the result of vigorous training. The motto of the infantry, follow me, Two simple words, embroidered on our patch, embody both the spirit of the bayonet and the spirit of our infantry. While always being true to our core values of the infantry profession, we are constantly assessing, developing, implementing, and evaluating training, and training methodology to provide the best possible training for our infantry formations throughout the Army. This year, we developed a new training event for our initial entry soldiers we titled The First 100 Yards. Developed by the United States Army Infantry School and the senior enlisted non-commissioned officers of the 198th Infantry Brigade. The event is designed around the following tenets. Understanding and appreciation for the spirit of the infantry. By exposing trainees through physical hardship, a belief in oneself, belief in your teammates, and a belief in the leaders with whom they serve. Intuitively knowing that when the infantry leader says, follow me, that they, the infantry, will accomplish all missions and defeat any enemy under any conditions. We've taken a close look at how we instill the spirit of the bayonet and the spirit of the infantry. From the first moment our soldiers arrive here as their initial training event on day one, it is critical that our newest generation of soldiers have the experience at the beginning of their journey to become an infantry soldier. This lays the foundation for the next 22 weeks of infantry training. This is in stark contrast to what most soldiers across our Army have experienced over multiple generations during the first day of basic training. Commonly referred to as the shark attack, this non-documented period of instruction was developed during our draft Army years where the cornerstones of the event were to establish dominance and authority using intimidation and fear to weed out the weak of heart. It created a chaotic environment that centered around applying physical exertion under stress, usually with the utilization of the trainees' duffel bags to determine those that were worthy to serve in the Army. Drill sergeants were charged with assessing the trainees' ability to handle stress singling out the perceived undesirables by enveloping them in a manner that emulated a shark attack, thus the name of the event. This activity, however, does not instill the spirit of the infantry. It betrays the innate trust between teammates and worse, betrays the crucial bond of trust with our leaders. Today, with an all-volunteer force and a large cohort of seasoned combat leaders, we have implemented a training event that captures the essence of our Army values and ethics by highlighting the culture of our infantry, dating back to the doughboys of World War I and trench warfare. Again, our infantry has always defined itself by the ability to close with our enemies in the last 100 yards of combat against the toughest of odds. It is critical now more than ever we continue to secure our infantry legacy. Our National Infantry Museum here at Fort Benning, Georgia, and the last 100 yards exhibit depicts the infantry's legacy and contributions to our country for the past 245 years. For doughboys leaving the trench or going over the top and crossing into no man's land under a barrage of any machine gun fire against insurmountable odds meant believing in yourself you believed you could make it. Operation Overlord, during D-Day, when Lieutenant Colonel Rudder 
and the men of the 2nd Ranger Battalion scaled the cliffs of Point de Hawk meant they had faith in their leaders. They believed they had the wisdom to make the call and the experience needed to guarantee mission accomplishment, coining the motto, Rangers lead the way. These acts of courage and personal sacrifice required infantry soldiers to believe in themselves, the wisdom and experience in their leaders, and the unwavering desire to succeed at any cost. The same attributes of mental and physical toughness are found in the infantry soldiers of today and referenced in our field manuals of our past. The old basic field manual 2325, Bayonet, M1905, written in September of 1943 and endorsed by the Chief of Staff of the Army, General George C. Marshall, really speaks to the essence of the infantry. I wanna take a moment and read an excerpt from the manual that defines the legacy and attributes under which an infantry soldier must possess and the benchmark of instruction provided that sharpens our profession. The will to meet and destroy the enemy in hand-to-hand -hand combat is the spirit of the bayonet. It springs from the fighter's confidence, courage, and grim determination, and is the result of vigorous training. Through training, the fighting instinct of the individual soldier is developed to the highest point. The life of the infantry foot soldier is one of both hardship and pride. However, the key to much of our successful legacy always comes down to skill and will. Mastery of our craft and the belief in self, teammates, and leaders. This mastery and its belief has always inspired generations of infantry soldiers to achieve the impossible. Ask any infantry soldier about the unimaginable hardship they've endured, and they will tell you instead about who they share these hardships with. The first 100 yards sets the critical foundation for the future of our branch by professionally introducing the soldiers to the spirit of our great branch. They will immediately come to realize this journey in the infantry is one that will never take alone, and it is defined by the leaders willing to share in the hardship. In the end, this will develop teamwork, identify informal leadership, establish trust, and build esprit de corps. The first 100 yards solidifies the bond and commitment of the infantry's past to build on the continued legacy of our future. The first 100 yard training event is broken down into five phases and is codified in an SOP in both the 198th and the 197th One Station Unit Training Infantry Brigades. Phase one starts a few days prior to the first day of training at the reception battalion and is in conjunction with the yellow phase of training. Cadre from the ship company prepare a series of questions and answers about the infantry and the OSIT unit of assignment, such as battalion and company, mottos, unit chain of command, and unit history. The intent of this is so that the trainees can succeed through individual preparation and develop an appreciation for the organization they will be a part of for the next 22 weeks. The trainees are told that they will be asked questions pertaining to the information required as part of the first 100 yards. The questions are not difficult or excessive, but so an individual investment is made to their commitment to become an infantry soldier. Phase two, resupply mission is drafted in a simple mission format that requires each platoon to work as a member of a team to complete an essential resupply operation in preparation for offensive operations. Prior to execution as part of the mission order, they will read the first 100 yards narrative. Phase three, consists of ACFT events, leg tuck, the hand release push-up, and the standing power throw as a member of a platoon. Each soldier will conduct as many as possible for a cumulative repetition for the entire platoon. The soldiers are encouraged to work together in order to achieve completion of the event in the fastest time and given a clear action condition and standard. The platoons that fail to obtain the fastest time will be given an appropriate corrective training exercise. In conjunction with the ACFT competition, trainees will be quizzed on the questions provided in Phase 1 at the reception battalion and given corrective training only if they fail to answer correctly as part of the platoon. 
Finally, the trainee's baggage will be staged via transportation in a predetermined area within the company training area. And they will be instructed to identify their equipment and place it in the designated area in the CTA. This is well organized and not designed to be a hazing event, but promote attention to detail and urgency to execute a task in a timely manner. Phase four consists of two events, cadre introductions by company and platoon, and the infantry demonstration squad. The introductions are self-explanatory and generally conclude with the drill sergeant's creed as a contract to the soldiers they lead and train. The infantry demonstration squad inspire the trainees to stay the course and complete the last 100 yards of training. They can achieve through hard work and commitment to the infantry way of life. It resembles graduation day with the soldiers demonstrating the event who have completed 22 week OSIT dressed in full kit and narrated with pyrotechnics. The narration highlights the equipment that they will become familiar with and the training events they will be participating in. Finally, phase five. The first 100 yards concludes following the infantry squad demonstration as each platoon cadre moves the trainees into the CTA and into their respective bays to start the first 72 hours of red cycle training and the end processing requirements. Thank you for joining me as we explain the tenets of the first 100 yards, which lays the foundation and instills the spirit of the bayonet in the newest generation of infantry soldiers. We will continue to provide the world's most lethal and combat capable infantry soldiers the world has ever known. Follow me.